Good morning folks. Welcome to Ontario on a beautiful early December morning. The snow is fluffy and squeaky underfoot. The ground has firmed up. It's starting to feel a bit more seasonable. We've sure had a warm fall so far. Well today I'm going to try and start little Betsy and I kind of have a feeling that she's not going to like this cold weather and it's not going to turn over fast enough to start. The two batteries that are in her, well, they've paid for themselves. They've been in there for a while. Let's put the key in and see what happens. <laughs> Obviously that's not going to work. So today, folks, we're going to change the two John Deere batteries that are in there now. I'm going to take them out and being the frugal type that I am, I'm going to put in one battery to replace them. So I'm going to lift the lids and let's have a look inside. That sure is a refreshing day and this seat is frozen rock hard. <laughs> well you'll notice I have a little maintenance charger here on these batteries. I put that in there permanently last summer because I was hoping to be able to get another winter out of these two batteries. And I thought I'd probably put them in five or six years ago. When I read the note on them, it says I actually changed them three years ago. Now John Deere, when these tractors came new to Canada, the 10, the 20, the 30, the 40, the 50, and the 55 series, anything under 100 horsepower were all built in Mannheim, Germany. That's where this tractor came from. And when they came to Canada, they came originally equipped with two 12 volt batteries and it has the original wiring harness and I put in it the last time two 12 volt batteries. This time I'm considering replacing that and putting in one battery, one larger capacity battery just because I'm frugal. Just like the reason I have that maintenance charger on there is because I'm frugal. But now when I see that I only changed them three years ago, wow, I hate to replace them already. So I'm going to put a booster on. You'll notice that I've plugged the block heater in well, I've put the booster on, and we've only got about 20 amp charge going into those batteries. Let's see if that makes a difference. Question answered. Time for some new, new batteries, or actually time for a new battery. And actually, I'm going to change the battery cables while I'm doing it, if there's some are available. Well, I've measured up the maximum size I can have for one battery to replace the two. I've measured up the length of my cables. I'm going to replace two ground cables with one. And these tractors were grounded from the battery to the battery box compartment. I'm going to run the battery ground, a single line, down to one of the starter mounting bolts. And I'm going to run a single new positive cable because now it has a cable for two batteries. I'm going to run one shorter positive cable and I'm going to try and reroute it to get keep it as short as possible. I want to do that with both cables to limit the voltage drop across the cables. And I should tell you that the reason I didn't use a multimeter, measure the cranking amps of that starter and my voltage drops, is because my multimeter is in a job truck right now. <laughs> and it's quite a ways from here. So we did it the old-fashioned way, by process of elimination. Well, I'm going to go inside, see what's available, hopefully head to town and buy some parts. Well, folks, we're back out here on another beautiful early winter's day to continue working on the tractor. We braved the early Christmas shoppers crowd at Canadian Tire, and my, it was busy. And we got a battery that I think is going to work just fine. If I remember correctly, it's 950 cold cranking amps. And I'm going to replace the two 12 volt batteries that are in there wired in parallel with one. And because I'm doing that, I'm also going to change the battery cable configuration. I'm going to keep them as short as possible and I'm going to make up a new cable. I'm going to make up a new positive. I was hoping to actually buy them yesterday in Canadian Tire, but thankfully they didn't have any. So I grabbed my calipers, went to the tractor and measured the cables that are on it and saw that, hey, they're one not cable. I think I have some of that, to say the least. A dear friend of mine, Gary, was working on the decommissioning of the machine and it had all this one-aught red on it. 
and it was going in the scrap bin and he got permission to bring it home for Paul. So thank you, Gary. And I've got to say, I'll bet you that was 20 plus years ago at least. I went in my odds and sods box and pulled out a couple of solder on lugs. And I even have battery cable clamps. So we're all set. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull off the old batteries, take the old cables out, and I think before I make these cables, I'm going to put the battery in and just see how it sits because, again, I want to keep these as short as reasonably possible. Let's pull out those batteries. You know what? I love to write little notes when I'm doing work. Here on the 8th of December, three years ago, I said, warm and no snow. I love, named my wife, our children and grandchildren. Actually, only one granddaughter then. And then I said, I am blessed. I really am. <laughs> Just love this little bit of snow that's coming down. Ah, it's beautiful. Sure is feeling Christmassy. For safety's sake, I'm gonna take off the ground connections first. There we go. Our two ground straps are off. Makes it a lot nicer to work on the positive side in case a wrench happens to fit or hit something we don't want it to hit. We don't have to worry about any sparks because we don't have a return circuit now. Here are the two smaller 12s that were wired in parallel. Each of them is 590 cold cranking amps, so that would give us a total of 1190, I guess. This larger 12 volt, it has 950 cold cranking amps. I'm wondering how it will compare to how the two batteries performed when they were new and they were in good shape. I think with shortening up those cable runs and uh, tidying up that ground, I'm hoping it'll make quite a difference. Well, let's slide this one in place and we'll soon be able to do the acid test and see how it works. Well, everything was going well until I tried to put the battery hole downs on. And they are just a little bit too short. So I'm going to measure what I need. Then I went inside and had a look in the shop and I had a piece of quarter inch shredded rod. So I'll cut it to the right length, warm it up, bend it, and uh, make a couple new hold down clamps. Well, we've got the new battery in place, our new hold down fasteners made, and the battery is actually clamped in place. Now it's time to make up some leads. I think we'll start with a positive. I elected to go with a crimp-on connector when I made up our positive cable and I put a piece of shrink tube over the end to seal it. Let's go put it on now. We're running out of daylight quickly here. With our positive battery cable installed, all we've got left is the ground strap. And I was going to make another ground strap up and run it from the battery all the way back to the starter mounting bolts. But because we're running out of daylight, I'm going to reuse this one for now. It's also a one aught cable, so it certainly has the ampacity more than enough to do a good job, and it's in good shape. Obviously, I've bought it recently and installed it. And by recently, I mean within, oh, the last 10 years. <laughs> Let's put it on. I can't wait for the acid test. We'll get this cover back on. I'm really looking forward to seeing what she starts like. I 
Well, shall we see if it starts? <laughs> Certainly not any better. Oh my goodness. But I didn't charge that battery either. And who knows how long it's been sitting on the shelf. Wow, that's disappointing to say the least. Well, I'm gonna start it. I'm gonna put the charger on it. And then that's enough for tonight. <laughs> wow, I hope this isn't another rich learning opportunity. 